Welcome back, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Superwoman Wellness, where we're determined to bring you back to your superpowered self. Now, I have been so fortunate over the years of this show to bring on so many different guests with so much wisdom. But one of the concepts that we keep talking about that really seems to flub everybody up is around toxicity and around liver health and how that impacts your overall health. And so I brought my friend. She is now a friend because we had the most amazing conversation in L.A. recently. And her name, by the way, is Kate Middleton. It is not the original Kate Middleton. It is KB. B, but I want you to meet her. She's a toxic free lifestyle advisor and mindset coach based on the coast of Central California. Her platform is based on the education of living a toxic free lifestyle. And I really want to get into that and what that means for her. KB believes that through the products we use, the relationships we hold, and the mental and physical nourishment we consume, we are faced with many forms of toxins each and every day. As the founder of Toxic Free with KB, a popular podcast and health and wellness show, KB's core mission is to improve overall mental and physical health through the reduction of toxic exposure. Welcome to the show. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much for having me. Here we are back together Here again. Here we are back at it again. I love it. And you and I are on such similar paths, I think. And even in my latest book, The Hormone Shift, I spent a lot of time talking about toxicity and its role, even in, our, in something, you know, that where people think it's not related, something like your hormones. But one of the things that I meant it when I introduced you, it's like people get really like, overwhelmed is probably the best word. Like when you mm. start talking about toxicity, right? They're like, oh my gosh, should I not leave my house? Like, what do I do? It doesn't seem like I'm ever going to win this battle. So I'm just not going to worry about it. It's, it's just too much to do. You know, what brought you into this conversation around being to toxin free, right? And then even to take it that step further of helping people navigate that, because it is a really tough sort of journey once people begin on it. Oh my gosh, sure. Beautiful question. I think we need to kind of step back. And from what you just mentioned with being completely 100% overwhelmed and being like, whoa, like what the heck? Like, I, so I can't even live my life. Like it becomes very like negative if you think about that. And then it kind of becomes depressive if you think of it in that realm. Um, so, you know, with that being said, you have to take the baby steps. You have to take the baby steps. And I think even me as a toxic free lifestyle advisor and interviewing a lot of people and talking to so many, um, you know, just people in my community and my clients, um, it really shows that yes, true. Like the, the broad scheme of things, people are overwhelmed. Um, and part of my journey came about was that I had to, clean out the clutter, right? Like I had to become an advocate for my own health. Um, there's a lot of things in life that do not support you. And when you talk about toxins and you, you talk about the overwhelm of that, you also have the question that comes back that is, can we truly live a toxic free life? The answer is no. Like the answer completely is no. But then when you pair in the overwhelm with that, you say, You've got to do the best that you can, though, with the resources that you have. And part of my journey was, as I mentioned before, being an advocate for myself, educating myself. And that brings me back to my platform of educating others. But hmm. when I was educating myself, I was going through so many different pillars of journeys in life, you know, dysfunctional relationships mold mm. toxicity if we're talking yep. about detoxing the liver yep. um hormonal fluctuations because of the high cortisol levels the extreme adrenal burnout all of these things go hand in hand so when totally. you go back yep. and say living a toxic free life you have to break it down educate yourself and say what is the priority first let's tackle that let's simplify that how can i improve it and make it a little bit better. So of course, there's much more of an in-depth journey throughout my life. And certainly you can ask me further questions with that. Yeah. Um, but that's in a nutshell, how the journey began. 
Well, what made you even, I'm just so curious because in my experience, it's either been a health crisis or, you know, uh, something that has spurred you, a family member, a relative dealing with something like, what was the, like, what even got you down this road? Like for me, it was my health crisis. We've talked a little bit about that, right? Like my whole experience, you know, navigating what was going on with me, but what was it for you? So that's a great question. So on my show, Toxic <laughs> on my show, Toxic Free with KB, I have four pillars that I regulate upon. They are relationships, nourishment, so what we put in our body, right? What we consume mentally, environment, mm-hmm. where do we live, where do we work, and personal care, health, beauty, etc. And so part of my journey, some of the big like aha moments in my life, that sounds so glamorous to say right now, but they were actually (laughs) really catastrophe, traumatic moments in my life. So if we're talking about relationships, growing up in a dysfunctional household with Mm. a father that was, you know, depressed, like literally, dysthemia, depression. Um, Mm -hmm. That was hard as a young girl, not seeing a mother and a father relate to each other, getting yelled at for certain like little things that creates such a scarred impact. You know, the body does keep the score. Mm -hmm. Moving on to relationships. I was from a sexually abusive relationship in my early 20s. And I think what that does to the female body and how it really kind of made I'm not going to speak for everyone, but may turn you off from your identity of yourself. So the mindset and the relationship that you have with yourself, I mean, that, if you want to speak hormonally, that threw me all over the place. Um, You know, losing my periods because of that high fight or flight stress. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was just talking to someone about this today where we don't realize, you know, we have all these conversations around hormones and things like that, but a lot of it begins in the brain, right? Because Mm -hmm. we know that the hypothalamus, which sits in the brain, and when there is trauma or chronic stress, then what we find is that that whole area becomes inflamed. So we've actually started to label it as its own autoimmune syndrome. It's autoimmune hypothalamus, I can't even say the word, hypothalamitis is the name of it. But going to what is happening to women, like you're talking about, when there is trauma or abuse, or you've grown up, and I did too, by the way, grown up in a kind of dysfunctional way, then that area of the brain is already inflamed, you know? Mm -hmm. And so cortisol is already pumping out. So it sounds like you were in that space very, very young, you know? Truly, truly. I mean, I was, and this is something I work on deeply in therapy too, is I was that young child that was the smiley face of the family that people Mm. please are what can Mm -hmm. i do for you are you okay because i'm not okay but i don't want to show it because i have to represent the happiness of the family so with that being said that was a great point of what you mentioned with the inflammation of the brain and i do have you know turns out i do have an autoimmune Mm. Um, i have extreme brain odds and i think the more and more that I'm in tune with my body now, the more that I am aware how debilitating the flare-ups can be when times of stress, when times of central nervous system dysregulation or imbalance, I guess, which would you say, um, occurs, you know, and in other things systemically happened with that, you know, the liver being overburdened and not being able to release this excess uh, toxins, if you want to say that, um, you know, with all the other external factors that are bombarding me emotionally, physically, you know, environmentally, you know, mold, uh, wind, whatever, like little things. But, you know, when the body is overburdened, of course, being I got into be a toxic free lifestyle advisor because I had to educate other people. My mom mm-hmm. was a functional nutritionist my entire life. I was primarily her intern. Um, <laughs> and you, mm-hmm. yeah. And so I, I, um, I had to really pair that Western Eastern relationship, which we talked yeah. about formally. Yeah. And 
um, and use myself as the vessel it was made to be and experiment on myself so I could practice what I preach to others mm -hmm. because I've been there. I've yeah. totally been there. Yeah. Um, yeah. So here we are. Here we are. So, the, the we, so let's go back into this, your four pillars of toxicity. So you're, you're inflamed, you're, you're in these relationships or emotional situations, right? Which increase toxicity. Um, How did you realize that that's a toxin? I don't think a lot of people, they, when they hear the word toxin, they think, okay, like how many parabens are in my product, right? Or like, what's the right. pesticide load? They're not thinking my relationship and my emotional interaction might be a toxin. How did you come to that realization? Come to that self-definition? Well, if you think about the definition of toxin, mm -hmm. it's something that is basically poisonous, right? And when I think of toxin to us, like the toxin realm, the toxin world, it should be in regards to us because we're focusing on ourselves and we're working on ourselves, but it's an invader, right? Yeah. So if I think about all these things, all encompassing topics in life, they're all invasive if they are, I mean, I want to say uncomfortable, even though we should be living out of our comfort zone, but it's something that's a red flag. Hello. Mm -hmm. Is this a sign? Is this a, a symptom? Um, you know, I had a great teacher, a yoga teacher, and I remember I was sitting in class one day and I don't know, I was deep in thought. And she just said, recognize, or, oh gosh, what did she say? Um, go back to the, the sensations, go back to the sensations. So when you recognize, you know, if we're talking about the pillars again, the four pillars, relationships, environment, nourishment, personal care, the sensations that you get, if something seems good, it's probably good for you. Ooh, I like if it. something seems bad, it's probably not so good for you, right? Yeah. And also it's the trial and error with yourself. If you're hanging out with a friend that's always like, you're like, whoa, they're like, I'm recognizing they're always drinking. Hey, it's 10 o'clock in the morning. Like, are you okay? This seems a little like it's not serving me in my, in my own relationships with people. So that's just a little example, right? Red, the red flag. Red flags. And I love to like, you know, a lot of people are talking about this nowadays is, is like your body's, what do we call it? Intuition, knowledge, uh, sensory system like it kind of knows right this is not so great for me. this is not so good this is great this is not great right. you know it kind of knows but we ignore it and a lot of times there's so much else and then i think and here's a fundamental belief that i have i don't know if you agree is that when you're in a high cortisol state you ignore all of that intuition self-knowledge that voice whatever we want to describe it as right and that's where we continue to drink the poison, right? Whatever mm -hmm. the, I love that you called it a poison, whatever the poison is, you know? So yeah. um, I think that's the biggest challenge folks have. So if someone is, you know, says, hey, KB, I want to live a relatively toxic free life. I know I can't get to zero, but I want it to be less because I, yeah. I buy in, right? I understand that this is not great for me. This is not great for the fullest expression of who I am. How do I know where to start? Oh my gosh. Okay. So I'll say, Dr. Taz, that is a great question. How do you start? Well, guess what? <laughs> it's super simple. I like to say that. Make it super simple. What is the priority? What is the thing that you use or perhaps do the most that you understand is not serving you? Mm -hmm. Right? Is it, mm -hmm. let's say food. Is it a food that you're like, every time I eat this, you know, I get so sick to my stomach and I have gastro, you know, distress. And it's like, well, okay, well, maybe take it out for a week, maybe substitute it in for something else. Or, or, or maybe it's a friendship. Maybe, you know, you, you turn into the five people you hang out with, right? Truly. Good point. So maybe, um, maybe they're gossiping so much that you're like, I feel bad listening to that instinct, right? Take a break take a break. Maybe it's a cleaning solution. Maybe you're like, Oh my God, I'm just like itching like crazy. Itching, yeah. like, 
yeah, I'm itching like crazy. And like my allergies, my nose is stopped up. Swap it out. I have some great examples for y'all. Um, mm. You know, it's about the trial and error, but it goes back to the priorities, right? The cooking, so the cooking, um, you know, pans, right? Everything can be made into a process. It's progress, not perfection. Right. I think that's such a key point to point out there. It's a journey. Um, I, I warn everybody it's a journey. Totally. Like wherever you start is the right place to start. And then mm -hmm. like we learn, we keep learning, right? Like I'm still learning. Like I've been in practice over 15 years. I still learn from somebody every single day, every single day. There's something new I learn, you know? So it's just, this is all, this is not, you have to get it right. Um, but you know what the other thing I've seen too is moms with children mm -hmm. and they get super yeah. anxious that they're harming their kids or, you know, like, are they doing something that's going to hurt the, like, you know what I mean? There's a lot of anxiety for moms too. What do you tell them? Yeah. Well, I mean, I actually have had many approach me. Like I had this woman pretty much like pin me up against one. She's like, oh my gosh, you're a toxic free lifestyle advisor. Like the water bottle situation. And I'm like, hold on, like, let's chill out. <laughs> Yeah. And I'm like, okay, don't worry about, you know, this, just make sure that you clean it out very, very well. I mean, obviously, like, if, it, if we're going to use water bottle, bottles as an example, I would stay away from plastic, because plastic, obviously, we know how it's produced and consumed, um, and heated up and what it does to the body. But mothers, like, give yourself some grace. I have my 11 year old stepson that has fed me with this quote that I use on my show. And it's remember, you're doing your best and your best is great. You know, as you mentioned, you can always backtrack, you can always mm -hmm. try again, you know, because you could be the perfect mom at the end of the day, and it's still not going to be perfect. You could not buy the teenager something to eat, and they're still going to go find a way to eat right. it. But right. it goes back to the talking to them instead of saying no education is much more vital much more important and also practicing what you preach kids yeah. are very absorbable even from a young age moms kids are very absorbable they will see what lifestyle practices you do what things you do they will do the same things i guarantee you i love that i think that we don't realize how much we're influ how much influence we have right within our homes and amongst our children. And a lot of times, like I get this all the time with two teenagers. Right. But, oh. um, but then I turn around and like, Oh my goodness, there's apple cider vinegar in my daughter's room. <laughs> like there's all this like stuff wow. that I've talked about before. And she actually gave me the biggest compliment yesterday, by the way, she's 16 years old and I was seeing patients from home and um she walked in there they were off and she walked in and she's like you kind of have a cool job I'm like i think so i was like wow we're making progress but you know what is the one of the ways like when you're looking at the landscape of toxicity are there a couple of common patterns that you've seen in some of the folks that you've worked with over and over again places where they struggle, little things that they could do that would have made a major difference. You know, like, I'm just curious through your experience, what you're observing. Okay, so this is gonna be something I'm sure people probably might not think about when they think of toxicity, because it, it's harmful to the self, and then it's also harmful for like the others out there. Yeah. But it is the common theme of boundaries. I think, uh, I know, see, right? Explain. Curveball. Yes. So, please explain. so boundaries with the self. Um, I really feel like this has been one of the the most talked about subjects as of recent with amongst all my clients or just people in my community that are following me, uh, following with me, I guess I should say. But boundaries, the way that we treat ourselves and uphold the standards for ourselves, right? Self care. Um, lifestyle practices, speaking up for ourselves, you know, I could name it on and on and on. That is giving others permission of how they can treat us, right? So say, for instance, you are in a relationship with a narcissist. 
or have a narcissist in your life, right? If you do not uphold those strong boundaries and still cater to them, give them power, they're going to take it, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not helping them. It's not helping you. It's not helping the whole relationship. Um, thus, bringing your mental state down. Thus, you'll probably make poor choices because you'll have poor self-esteem. And yeah. um, I like to call that if, if, if my boundaries are overstepped, um, I become the unme, right? Mm, the unme. We talked about yeah, the unme. I become bitter. I become uh, almost like the adrenals go on fire, and I'm like, yeah. what else can I do? It's like that Thursday moment in our life, right, Doctor Taz, where you're like, it's <laughs> Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I told you about that. I told you how like Thursday, I'm like, <laughs> so, anyhow. But go. truly boundaries, boundaries, yeah. all, you know, and remembering that like everyone's busy in life. Right. Everyone is right. so busy. But if we, this is a good example of boundaries. If we continue to say yes, 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 overcommit ourselves and we don't have our cups filled, or we really don't want to be in that situation, we're not honest with ourselves first, you know, then we're going to become the unme. And remembering that no is a complete sentence, right? I love uh, that. But so that's that's a common pattern that I've I've heard a lot. I mean, obviously, I could say like it's, a lot of people would be like, I can't lose this weight. Like, what should I eat? Or or the cleaning products. Yes, of course, it's very very common. Um, but I think that's been one of the things that's really been catastrophizing people's self purpose too. The unme, I love that idea of the unme. I meet women all the time who talk about the unme. I probably have an unme too, right? That's overly stressed and frazzled and yeah. loses patience very, very quickly. But I find it interesting that you comment back with it's about boundaries, not about the product or the food or organic or like all these other things people like, like trip over, you know, why do you think that's the biggest one versus some of these other categories? Well, I think boundaries plays into the relationship with products, ah, the relationships wow. with, how, with how you spend your dollar, your dollar, you know, what you put out there, dollar spending, is what's going to be coming and marketed more out in the community, right? So it's kind right. of more of a collective whole. Boundaries goes into the environment, your workplace. So it does encompass everything, if you think about in life. Um, products, of course, are huge. Uh, I think the boundaries you have with the relationship of, especially social media, what is being marketed to you? Am, mm. Are you going to honor yourself to research more? Or are you going to be like, oh, yeah, sure. They say it's good. I'm going to do it. But yeah. wait, what about me? You know, that's a simple example. Um, but truthfully, I, I, I feel like it is the gateway to a lot of different positives and negatives in life. It's fascinating. You, that's such a good point. The boundaries, it really, that's so true. They determine how you're going to spend your money, how you're going to pick, what you're going to make. Like, are you going to go through the fast food line? Or are you going to go and like actually make a meal? A lot of that is about boundaries, you know, and setting those boundaries for your time and for your energy that ultimately probably reduce your toxic load. I have to ask this. What is, what is your biggest toxin? Like your Temptation talk. Is there a temptation toxin? Yeah. What is your biggest oh temptation toxin? <laughs> so. In what category? Oh my gosh. Uh, let's do food and product. Okay. So food and product, my temptation toxin. Okay. So I was, I have to admit, I was raised as a nutritionist daughter. So I honestly don't have a sweet tooth. Okay. Um, I love salty things. Like mm -hmm. I love like salty nut things. Okay. Um, I know that's like, so like, love it. Like, meh. Um, but products, I have to say I'm a stickler for trying really, it might be toxic to some people, but like really masochist type of spa things. Uh, <laughs> I don't know okay, where gotcha. that comes from, but uh -huh. like, I think that's something that like, 
I don't know, I could do better at being like, do I like really want to like put this on my body right now? Um, but I try to be as natural as possible. If we could talk on a different realm, I think that like, I love to exercise, I love to move. I'm like an energizer bunny. But um, at times, I think my toxin in life is not allowing myself to rest. Mm, that's a good so, one. Yeah, a rest. And also, if we want to talk about nourishment, I am so like, go, go, go that, um, you know, the boundary with myself is remembering to carve out the time to sit and nourish myself without any other distractions and making sure I nourish myself before I, you know, too tired to, yeah, you know, really put in the like the full effort with that. So it's all boundaries, everything's so boundaries. Yep. Yeah. See, no one's perfect. <laughs> no one's all perfect. about boundaries. No, I think those are all good ones. I just, you know, same thing. I think if I, I was thinking as you were talking, I was like, my temptation toxin food category would be tortilla chips and chocolate. Mm. My emotion, as an emotional, psychosocial, emotional one would be same. It would be not stopping just to oh, yeah. eat and to breathe and to rest and over scheduling. That's a big one for me. That's a yep. big one. Over scheduling is a big one. Uh, relationship wise, I've had to get stronger and smarter as I'm sure you have as well, you know, where no is a full sentence, right? No, I can't do that for you. No, I can't uh, show up at X, Y, and Z. And, you know, there's a lot of like in all communities, but definitely in ours, there's a lot of like, extended family pleasing that sometimes happens and it's become yeah. much easier over the years to be like, no, can't do it. Can't be there busy, you know, that type of thing. So back to boundaries again. So with all the stuff that we've talked about and you and I have had conversations about hormones, you know, what is your take on what we're seeing hormonally in the world today with cortisol being high and mm -hmm. Stress hormones everywhere. And then kind of a follow up to that. What do you do for your hormones? How do you keep your hormones balanced? Oh, my gosh. Um, so hormones, that's very interesting because they're so tender, right? Yeah. They are so yeah. like you kind of go one way and it could be like, yeah. like you know, yeah. back. <laughs> You're like, well, I was doing so good and this was good. Yeah. Cortisol, my cortisol, I have actually gotten a slap on the hand because like your cortisol is extremely high mm. because I'm, oh, I'm stressed. I, I do have, I'm in the super woman um, time of my life and I feel it full on yeah. feel it. And, yeah. you know, I've got three stepchildren. I have been two dogs. Uh, I have my own business, full time job. Yeah. You know, I do feel it. And so um, I've had to regulate my cortisol. I've been taking some herbs. It's called Rolora. Mm -hmm. And, which is made of basically magnolia and that seems yep. to have really calmed me Love down. Magnolia. Yeah. The hormone journey has been a very up and down one for me. There's been past times in my life where I've had to take chaste berry um, and, you know, which really check my B levels. I am plant-based. I do not eat animal. So I have to make sure the nutrients are coming in, in different forms making mm -hmm. sure that I'm getting enough of them. Stress, when I started my journey with mold the very first time I got it, um, the simplest things of detoxification to get out the excess um, estrogen or whatever was being stored in my yeah. liver was yeah. meditation. That seems to Ooh. be one of the most beneficial things for my hormone regulation for the fight or flight, the nervous system, um, self-care and not being guilty to take the self-care. Mm -hmm. That's been a really great aspect and, um, communication. And with, when I say communication, I say effective communication and comprehension with the other person through that, that communication you know, these are all very neuro, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but the hormone journey, and where do I see it going? I think it's going to become a little better and regulated, especially I always think of the teens, I always think of the younger ones, because they're our future. 
Mm-hmm. Um, Definitely. But I think it's only going to get better if we do our part to educate them. And then also if we, in part of that education, we do our part to help support the company, the brands, the environments to do better, right? To be more transparent. And if we're going to talk about food industry, if we're going to talk about what's being marketed to us, I think those choices need to be tailored a lot more. Remember, you're doing the best that you can with the resources that you have, but education plays such a huge part. So I hope for the best for the hormone community, but just transparency with yourself and transparency with what's going on. I think getting your head out of your phone in the scrolling factor and going back to educating yourself, remember, you are your own vessel. You are your yeah. own vessel. No one can heal you. No one can do anything for you. You have to start by driving your own ship, okay? Um, I think that's that's kind of the only way we can see it going. Um, oh, my gosh. But I, I, I think it's going well. I mean, I really do. I think it's going to go well if we do on yeah, that Yeah, I think, I think it's just drive the ship, right? Like, a lot of people oh, don't. It's the white horse thing, right? Like, I don't know why we think this, but we think something's going to save us or someone is going to save us or someone knows better than us. I feel like those are like common, like sort of things going around in a lot of people's heads. And, you know, it's taken me a long time to be like, I'm going to save myself, you know, like I'm (laughs) going to figure this out. I'm going to trust me, you know? So um, I think, And I think when you start trusting yourself and you trust your intuition and you're taking the time to listen and nurture yourself and doing all these things, then no decision is a bad decision because it's the decision that you made and it's the journey that you began and it may not end up, you know, exactly where you pictured it, but wherever it's going to end up, it's, it's, and it's leading you there so you can take the next step, you know? And so I think that the more we learn to trust ourselves the more we can make these decisions that really work in alignment with our health, you know, and I think you brought up, it's just not the answer I expected from you, but you brought up boundaries and all these things that are not what people think when they hear the word toxin. So for everybody, you know, listening and watching, I hope you walk away, like realizing poison shows up in a lot of different forms and in a lot of different ways. So, so right. incredible. How can people learn more about you, you and what you do and connect with you? What's a, what's a good place for them to go? Certainly. Um, we, our show, my show is on YouTube. It's called toxic free with K B. It, uh, the podcast is across all streaming platforms. Just search toxic free with K B. Give us a five star and a rating. Let us know what you want to hear. I think that's the most important yeah, thing. Good point. Let us know what you want to hear in the comments section and we will definitely make that happen. Um, and we are on Instagram at toxicfree.kb and we're on TikTok. Oh my gosh, TikTok. <laughs> Toxicfree.kb. <laughs> so yeah. So and you can find me at toxicfree.com if you want to kind of an easier access to click on things. If you didn't remember anything, but We're here to support you. And yes, as you said, Dr. Taz, um, we don't just talk about what the scariest, like, oh my gosh, I'm going to be like shamed by mom, you know, for doing this. No, we talk about like real stuff and stuff you might not think about and just like supporting you. We're here to support you on your journey. So thank you for having me. Of course, always. Thank you so much for being here. And I'm sure everyone, you're just mind is blown thinking about toxins and living a toxic free lifestyle in a very different way. So, so glad you all got to meet my friend KB and thank you all for watching and listening to this episode of Superwoman Wellness. Remember you can rate and review it and share it with your friends and same thing. would love to know what you guys want to hear more about so that we can continue to develop and bring on all the amazing guests. So I will see you all next time.